Coming up, we take to the streets across the country to get your views on all things Canadian. From Newfoundland and Labrador and Nova Scotia, this is Outburst. Hello and welcome to Outburst. I'm Glenn McGuinness. Well, with a brand new government elected last fall, Canadians across the board have had time to study the issues and how the government is moving forward with them. So we sent our cameras out in Atlantic Canada to see how they're doing so far. Our question, what is the Eastern view of the federal government? I think for the most part, it's fairly positive except you have the, the odd areas of uh, veterans affairs and health. I think they're the two big negatives right now. Right now, quite positive. Um, the new government, the, the new Liberal government, seems to be very uh, pro-Atlantic and seems to be looking at uh, the Atlantic context fairly positively, uh, certainly compared to the last government. But I think it's fairly good. You know, and the election results seem to indicate that it was a sea of red so i think it's been pretty good like yeah like i, I but, but yeah like i said like uh, like the honeymoon period is getting over now so they need to get their act together because like i sort of went through the, the budget and it wasn't really as per what he promised before yeah so he yeah, but but then again like you can still give him a lot of leeway right now because yeah he's just as you assumed office i mean i'm talking about trudeau yeah so yeah he needs to get his act together quick because the honeymoon period's getting over now well i mean we have a provincial liberal government so one would like to think that we elected a provincial liberal government so therefore we have um, a positive um, view on the on the on the new liberal government in, in ottawa uh, that said, uh, I'm a transplant here, and I, I, I do note that there's, it's, it's very, outside of Halifax, it's a very conservative province, and, and the regions rurally are very conservative. So I, I think the, the, jury's, the jury's out. I'm not really quite sure. I'm optimistic. I think that there's, there's, um, that there's tremendous opportunity uh, for some growth, but the needs in Atlantic Canada are no different than that across Canada. I truly believe that. It's just, it's just how we approach it. We're, we're small. And there's advantages to that, but um, we tend to get overlooked a little bit. And I think sometimes there's a little bit of a hangover from previous governments and a little bit of a um, uh, jaded um, opinion of governments. But, um, you know, we have a new young uh, leader, and I, and I think we're all a little optimistic, and, and uh, that blush hasn't worn off yet. There's always a bit of push and pull with the federal government because, I mean, the seat of power is in Ottawa and Ontario and, and sometimes out west, so... Uh we don't have a big population. We don't have a lot of seats, so there's um, we're a bit of a minority in that in that aspect. So there's a love hate going on, I think. Right now, the current federal government, I think people are generally pretty happy the way it turned out. I think it was a kind of like anybody but Harper uh, sentiment going into the last election, and I think yeah, people are generally at least cautiously optimistic with the way it turned out. I would say since Confederation, Atlantic Canada has been. Uh, you know, really treated really poorly, I think, by the federal government in Canada. I mean, I don't want to go into the history, but there's a particular history of how this region was deindustrialized and left to uh, become poor and disadvantaged. But I think the advantage of being here is that people really don't take the kind of mythology uh, that the of you know economic growth under sort of global capitalism very seriously. We know it's never served us. I think that people have a sense that we could do something very different here. I'm a prairie gal and I've been here for 20 years so my views are shaped by that. I think there's a bit of suspicion you know it's Ontario. I have suspicion about Ontario. I'm from Winnipeg right but uh, I think that Atlantic Canada doesn't feel close to Ottawa or feel like it's being paid good attention to by Ottawa. I think it's changed quite a bit since the Liberals took over and I think we were sort of like left behind a bit with the Conservatives, but the Liberals, I think, are going in, you know, include us in everything that they do. Our fishery is one of the biggest issues here in, the, you know, in Atlantic Canada. So hopefully they will deal with all our issues with the fishery. The current federal government, I believe, is doing pretty good. Um, they're looking at, it seems to me, they're looking at what um, are concerning Canadians. Provincially, it might be a bit of a different story, but I think federally they're doing a good job of covering 
everything Canadians are looking for? I think things have probably um, changed uh, a lot in the last little bit since Trudeau has been in. Um, I think the East Coast view um, prior to Trudeau with Stephen Harper in was not good. Um, I don't think it was a secret that he wasn't fond of us and we weren't fond of him. Um, so I think right now it's a little more hopeful in that respect. Well, I'm not quite sure what it is now, but I know most of Eastern Canada voted Liberal in the last election. And uh, I feel, you know, that most people are quite favorable towards it now. I mean, we're just about coming out of that honeymoon period where we'll probably start to have more opinions on one side or the other. But uh, right now, I think most Canadians in Eastern Canada are probably still in the glow of the election a little bit. I think we, well, we have great expectations for the new government, and I think so far we're not totally disappointed. I'm, I'm sure he's never going to live up to everything that we were expecting, but so far I think it's, we're still positive, hoping to keep the positive view of things. What slogan can you find on Nova Scotia license plates? Yours to discover, Canada's Ocean Playground, or Garden of the Gulf? Yours to discover, Canada's Ocean Playground, Garden of the Gulf. Canada's Ocean Playground. Canada's Ocean Playground? Uh, I would say the second one, the Ocean Playground. Canada's Ocean Playground. Garden of the Gulf. You uh, live there. Uh, well, <laughs> I know this is a while ago. Uh, um, I'm going to say... Ocean Playground? Does that sound about right? Ocean, uh, ocean Playground? Canada's Ocean Playground. Absolutely correct. Okay. 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 That was a close one. Nova Scotia's license plates are emblazoned with a picture of the famous Blue Nose and the slogan, Canada's Ocean Playground. How many provinces border Nova Scotia by land? One, two, or three? We were just talking about geography yesterday. Two. I'll go with two. One. Two. One. One. Mm. Two. One. There's one. <gasps> New Brunswick is the only province to border Nova Scotia by land. Economic prosperity in Canada is something that's always been varied. While some regions enjoy strong economies, other regions have struggled. Atlantic Canada is one region that has many of its young people leaving home to find better opportunities elsewhere. So we sent our cameras out in that part of the country with this question. What is the best way to boost the economy in Atlantic Canada? Build less houses. There's so many houses going up. Property values are going down. Uh, so that doesn't do people like me any good because I already own a house, so that'd be one thing. Two, uh, there's the usual thing that people say about younger people who are needed. Uh, I was just reading about uh, tidal power and uh, all the discussions going on about that, but we need to get decent power in and cheaper than it is now. That would help that. And then if we can bring the taxes down a bit, we'll get people in as well. Create opportunity. Uh, bring in... Uh, I'm not sure. Cre attract industry to come to Nova Scotia to create jobs. Uh, give people the skills so that they can enter the workforce. Help people who may be off on disability or have some impediment to joining the workforce. Give them the tools they need to join the workforce. Uh, I think that's a start. The biggest problem in this coast is self-employment needs to be encouraged. And entrepreneurs need to be encouraged. There's not enough support for small businesses. We are nickel and diming and charging this fee and that fee and this block and that damn against these little businesses, right? People like me want to grow. We want to contribute to, 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 to the society, right? We want to raise a family. You know, help those little businesses to grow. That's the bottom line, man. Like, government jobs and military and this and that is all great, right? And insurance is helping the economy grow. And, but you know what? At the end of the day, it's the people that need to make it happen. And those are the youth and those self-employed people and the companies that small businesses that want to grow, right? Make ways, like New Brunswick, in my opinion, has done a lot better job than, than Nova Scotia. 
to support those youth and entrepreneurs, right? I don't think we have done enough good job here to, to support that. Well, that's a tough question, but I, I think I think green energy is, a, is definitely a way to go. Like the tidal uh, power is uh, coming on board, and they're starting to experiment with that. So I think that's a great idea. Uh, wind firms or whatnot. Um, so yeah, innovation and technology, IT, uh, those kinds of things. I'm going to go with immigration and education. That's that's the big one, right there. We need more people, and we need them to be more productive, and we need them to be working harder and smarter. That's really as good as it gets for me. You know, bu building up, uh, uh, getting imports of skilled skilled workers, um, somehow getting head offices here, uh, supporting uh, new technologies, new small new companies, anything to sort of build up some sense of uh, you know, economic growth. Um, I, you know, population growth would be great, but obviously you need the jobs to do that. Um, Supporting small businesses, supporting you know new new growth, new areas, high tech, for example. Oh, uh, here you have to reinvent the economy. Uh, the old economies aren't going to work here anymore. So uh, new, they have to reinvent. They have to develop new technology, biotech or something. Uh, this development here in Halifax is impressive, but that for the rest, the outlying provinces, the agriculture and industry, and that they're they're hurting bad. Little towns are hurting bring some more industry here because we're losing a lot of uh, young people. There's no jobs for young people, graduates especially. Um, they have to work three and four part-time jobs. There's no permanent jobs for them. So they, they go out west or they go somewhere else because they have loans, student loans. They don't, can't make enough money to pay them and uh, live above the poverty line. Most of them don't, I don't think, or they live at home. Um, but basically, I think uh, because we need young people, they, they think differently, they have good ideas, and they're enthusiastic, and they want to do something, they want to uh, make a difference, they want to have job satisfaction, and we just don't have anything to offer them. I'd bring back the film industry, frankly. <laughs> I think the arts offer Nova Scotia something way beyond the kitschy stuff, for which, you know, Nova Scotia is rightly known. It's good to have folk art, it's good to have a folk culture. But Halifax, in particular, was really getting on the map with the arts. And I'm sorry that what has happened has happened. Bring it back. Right now, focusing on what we have and what we can develop, for example, um, you know, oil is huge, right? I work for oil offshore, um, fisheries, right? We can take another look at that. It's been a long time since the moratorium, you know. Uh, and uh, enhancing tech and communications, I think that was a big one that we've tried a few times and, you know, could probably get further in. That's a hard one because we always seem to be going downhill and, and uh, it's like we go a couple of steps forward and then we go backwards. But I think maybe bringing in some more people, like you know, refugees and immigrants and people who will, uh, you know, uh, add to the economy. I know people are often afraid of immigrants coming in because they think they're going to take jobs, but they usually make jobs and make jobs not only for themselves but for other Canadians too. I know our oil and gas is, uh, you know, profitable right, not as profitable as it has been, but I think if we keep going, it, it will again, this will turn around and maybe just uh, more money to fisheries, of course, is always important to uh, eastern Newfoundland, so more money probably into our fishery and research, that sort of thing. It's Canada's youngest province and home to the oldest streets in North America. I'm talking about Newfoundland and Labrador. St. John's is one of the oldest settlements in North America, with year-round settlements beginning sometime after 1630 and seasonal habitation long before that. Water Street, located in downtown St. John's, became a commercial trading outpost for the Basque, French, Spanish, Portuguese, and English. Newfoundland and Labrador has its own dictionary. The province's language and dialect is so diverse, different communities often have their own unique accent. On September 11, 2001, 39 aircraft were diverted to a tiny airport in Gander. More than 6,600 people were taken into homes for up to three days until the airport reopened. Today, people who were stranded still visit their hosts, 
who offer the ultimate acts of kindness and hospitality. And those are just a few facts about Newfoundland and Labrador. The world is always changing, and Canada is no exception to that. We're the greatest nation on earth in which to live, but in this day and age, we still have our fair share of obstacles to overcome. From the environment to jobs to public safety, what stands out with you? Our question, what are the biggest challenges facing Canada today? Well, probably the decline in the manufacturing sector. Uh, the oil sands, uh, the lack of production there, uh, the lack of foresight in green planning on the oil sands. We have vast amounts of resources, we have vast amounts of wealth that we're really not harnessing. At the same time, I think we're getting so much better because part of our resources are very clean. They're very, we're now able to start to look at how do we build Canada outside of whether it's going to be necessarily reliance on oil, it can be start to look at wind power and tidal power, etc. Um, the key for us, I think, is really harnessing the brains in our head. So there's a lot of environmental issues, uh, so there's a big debate over the oil sands. So that's the biggest one, and then the economy is always a, an issue, but that's all related to the environment, in my mind. Yeah. I'd say the economy, like any other time, basically. You know, I know there's young people looking for work, and they can't find it. A lot of moving around within the country and especially this part of the country you know a lot of exodus I'd say maybe communication across the country uh, I don't think um, a lot of the provinces know much about the other provinces I know in eastern Canada I work for the government and a lot of times people from Ottawa call and they'll perhaps want me to set up a test in Newfoundland I think I can just hop in the car and you know drive to Newfoundland and be there for an hour and come back you know I don't think and out west I, I go out west sometimes and people don't really know much about east I think east in their mind stops at Montreal and I find that a lot but I think basically people don't know enough about the country well we have to deal with our indigenous indigenous issues and I think they're challenges that have been going on for too long hurting too many people well, I think the environmental crisis is the most serious thing we're facing, but the whole planet is as well. Another problem we have is living with what's going to happen in the United States. That's a tough one. Well, the economy seems to be, you know, the thing here in Newfoundland now is just that our uh, provincial governments, our budgets are really bad, and the uh, financial situation is really bad. So, but. You know, I think we're one of the best countries in the world, so, you know, whatever we have to deal with, we will deal with it. I think the Liberals will deal with it, and I think we're much better off now with the Liberals than we, than we were with the PCs. I'd say it's the economy and also uh, bringing the whole of Canada together in terms of uh, what best decisions are, are to be made in terms of whether it be pipelines, whether it be just trying to get a consensus that it fits the whole, because we're... We're small compared to the rest of Canada. Our influence is a lot smaller. So there needs to be a way to, uh, to balance that out so that everybody's heard. But it takes, it, or it, make, it takes decisions. I'm French. <laughs> it takes uh, decisions that will benefit the whole, not just the other parts of Canada, but Eastern Canada also. Some of the main issues on the table right now, I think, are refugees. Uh, Legalizing marijuana, if I'm not mistaken, I neither support nor deny that. And uh, you know, trying to get out of, you know, I guess, this economic slump that we're having right now. Things like uh, like real estate bubble. Not so much on this side of the country, but like on the other side. I know in BC they're having a lot of problems with uh, real estate and like regular people who have regular jobs, regular wages, being able to afford you know, million dollar houses, because that's all there is over there, right? I mean, that's, you know, we need to work on stuff like that, right? People need a roof over their head for them and their families in order to, you know, continue doing what they're doing, to produce and to contribute to the economy themselves. I think um, perhaps working on um, uh, just respect from other um, countries, I think that perhaps um, with previous governments there's been a lot of damage um, and um, I think that to focus on that 
um, other countries and leaders trusting us and believing in us and um, appreciating us for all the good that is going on in Canada right now, but um, as well as trying to mend maybe some um, relationships that became strained over the years. I don't know, probably, well, our economy, obviously, and our, getting our young people out working, and uh, of course we've been challenged now with the out in Fort McMurray, and uh, that's a problem there, and of course our direction our uh, military should take, and probably. It's one of Canada's founding provinces back in 1867 and home of the Blue Nose. If you guessed Nova Scotia, then you're right. The entire province is nearly surrounded by the Atlantic Ocean and is known for its high tides, lobster, fish, apples and blueberries. It is also home to the oldest ferry service in North America, the second oldest in the world, linking Halifax and Dartmouth. The Halifax Citadel is Canada's most visited national historic site. Nova Scotia was one of the four founding provinces to join Confederation with Canada in 1867. The name Nova Scotia is Latin for New Scotland. And those are just a few facts about the province of Nova Scotia. Canada has some of the most stunning scenery on earth and for such a large country, our variety of nature is incredible. So we took to the streets with this question. What makes your part of the country so unique? Okay, it's beautiful. Uh, we're right by the, the ocean. Uh, we can get close to nature if we want to. So particularly Halifax, Nova Scotia. It's amazing. Cape Breton Island amazes me. You can drive five hours and you feel like you're in another country. Absolutely beautiful. People are amazing. Uh, there's friendly happiness. Uh, people want to help each other. General good uh, attitude, I would say, about Atlantic Canada. I think it's a matter of the culture f that's been created by the land in which we live. We're fishermen, we're foresters, we're farmers. At the same time, you look around and the key to Atlantic Canada right now is we're starting to be a knowledge economy around a culture that is looking at almost blue collar. So now we're, we're doing the thinking, we're also doing the doing. And we're inventive, we're resourceful. Um, and the fact is, we enjoy, the, we, we enjoy what we have. So kind of a really good mix of everything. Actually, I, uh, to be honest, I, I think that the one thing that makes us unique is, is our size, which is a huge advantage. I think we tend to look at it as a disadvantage, but I come from Toronto. I built a company in Atlantic Canada, and I could not have achieved the same success in, in Toronto as I have here because I can reach out to, to stakeholders. I can reach out to, to partners, and, and I, I can make it happen faster because we're small. Um, and we tend to... Um, we, we, we tend to stick together during tough times. So I, I, I truly believe that, that that's our biggest advantage. I don't think that it's a disadvantage. And I think, I think other companies should come to the Atlantic region and start their businesses here because there's, there's a lot of opportunities and there's a lot of support systems in place. Oh, I like the pace here. And there's uh, um, not as much uh, density of population. Um, I find the big cities are too fast. I uh, can't get around very quickly. I feel I can get around here quickly. Don't need a car all the time. I just like the I like the culture. It has everything a big city has, but perhaps in smaller, you know, smaller amounts. But that's why I like it. I was born here. I wouldn't want to live anywhere else permanently. I think Atlantic Canada is still very clean and pretty, and not in a bad way. It's got a lot of healthy energy here, and I think that people are tired of big glass buildings and fast, fast, fast Las Vegas or Toronto. I think that Atlantic Canada really has a lot to offer in its authenticity. Oh, we're the best part of all the country. <laughs> Our oceans and our scenery and our people and Atlantic Canada is definitely the best part of all of Canada. I've worked in Nova Scotia and I've worked in the Northwest Territories and I've worked in Labrador and I'd never live anywhere where there was no ocean. The ocean and our, you know, our scenery and our country is just like part of the country is just the best. My part of the country, 
Well, the East Coast here is, uh, I think, uh, landscape, the weather. You either got to love the weather or move somewhere else. <laughs> um, and the people here are, I think, some of the best in the world. I think we really love where we live and we want to see the best for it. And uh, I invite everybody to come and visit and uh, bring some money to St. John's. <laughs> The people, it's beautiful, um, the land, the nature, and uh, all the resources, especially the people, I think. There is really no place like Newfoundland. The people here um, are just top-notch, and I think that anyone from any part of the world that comes here, you know, happens upon here for any reason, whether it's purposeful or not, um, or intentional or not, I should say, um, walks away and says that was a breath of fresh air. Like, we really are a good people and we have unbelievable landscape and our weather stinks, but you don't live here for the weather. That's not why we're here. We're, I think there's a real sense of community with Newfoundlanders. There's a lot of other things on the go too. People are friendly and they're, you know, all kinds of kitchen parties going on this time of the year and festivals and and uh, oh, I, it's just a great place to live. When did the province of Newfoundland become known as Newfoundland and Labrador? 1971, 1981, or 2001? 1981? 1981. 2001? 1981. 1981. 1971. I want to say 2001. I'm thinking 1981. <laughs> okay. Let's see who's right. Well, the answer? Yeah. 2001. Oh, yeah. <laughs> On December 6, 2001, an amendment was made to the Constitution of Canada to change the province's official name to Newfoundland and Labrador. How many MPs represent Newfoundland and Labrador in the House of Commons? Four, seven, or nine? Seven. Pure guess, seven. I have no clue, so I'm just gonna say four. Seven? I'll go with four. Seven. Lucky seven. Very good. <laughs> All right. Newfoundland and Labrador is represented by seven members of parliament in the House of Commons. There are currently 338 ridings across Canada. That's all for this episode of Outburst. Just a reminder, don't forget to check out our new CPAC TV to go app and our CPAC Quiz Canada trivia app. For more information, check our website, www.cpac.ca. I'm Glenn McGuinness, and on behalf of all my colleagues at the Cable Public Affairs Channel, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.